Welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I'm Petter and this is James. Hello. And today we're talking about volume four of Free Run Beyond Journey's End. So in this book, well, before we get into the characters, there was an, well, one thing at least that I wanted to touch on here is learning about the difference between human magic and the magic of the goddess uh, mm. was one thing that just lore-wise I thought was really interesting. And like that, that kind of lore stuff, I guess, mm-hmm. is stuff that always usually intrigues me. So I just thought it was cool to see that. And I guess Freerun's point of view on it or kind of opinions on it. Yeah, it was interesting. It was not something I expected that there was some sort of difference. But I guess in a lot of cases, you'll have classes, you know, like a dark mage versus, mm. you know, a bishop or something like that, you know. Right. And they kind of have light, dark magic. Not not the dark magic is evil. It's just a, it's a different brand of it. So I guess in that, in terms of that, maybe that's what's, going down here but it was interesting that they um, specifically said goddess is magic so almost implying that it comes from some sort of deity but we've seen in the past that Frieden herself doesn't believe in a, such a deity or even some other characters like they don't they're not really aware at least she doesn't worship it yeah the worship like, yeah you're yeah the That's belief a good point. is worship. still like i don't maybe, know maybe if... it could still be there maybe yeah maybe Fair enough. Mm. So I don't know. It just it was just interesting to hear that. Right. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So let's start by f- talking about free rent. I love to see. Ob- obviously, this was something that kind of carried on from volume three. But seeing how adamant she was, you know, about getting signed to start adventuring. Like, yeah. She didn't necessarily need him to adventure with them. Like she was. She. she I think she said at some point, like as long as he just goes on an, on an adventure, like it doesn't have to be with us. Uh, she <laughs> would be content, kind of. Uh, it was nice because, like, I don't imagine Free Run from Volume 1 would have felt that way or done, like, gone that far to bring him along. Hmm. Um, and I think that really shows how her character development, like, how far that she, she's come. Uh, and it's also, I feel anyway, like, her development has gone very, like, naturally and, like, seamlessly mm-hmm. uh, from then up, up until now. And, like, it's, like, all you, you barely, or at least I have, like, barely thought about it because it just has kind of happened l- little by little. Uh, but I think when you compare now to then, I think there is a stark difference. And it's it's great to see that, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and there's actually a few instances in this book where you do see a bit of progression for her in kind of understanding how humans value certain time or whatever or Mm. you know i i think there was i'm gonna make sure i I get it right there was a moment where she thinks back to uh, something that himmel said about her being a great mage um and said that's not that's not good enough you guys will or not good enough is not what you said but you guys will be dead soon anyway um but then when fern said it in the present she thanked fern for saying that so Mm -hmm. obviously there's there's that kind of uh, growth that I think maybe in volume one, maybe she wouldn't have really uh, acknowledged. Right. Uh, absolutely. Such. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I like that. But uh, going back to her uh, trying to help Zane, um, I think that as she says, he reminds her of herself mm. um, and how that she was basically saved from eternal boredom and <laughs> or you know whatever kind of lifestyle she was living by him holding like someone reaching out a hand to to her so i think she's trying to do the same for saying in in that way yeah it's beautiful but her her seduction technique didn't really work yeah. on same though <laughs> yeah but, <laughs> but it was very powerful against the right opponents <laughs> I love, I love, their reaction to it is so good yeah. <laughs> it's like whoa <laughs> put put that away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both both Fern and Stark. Yeah. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> oh, so funny and how Himmel had just fainted. <laughs> yeah. Uh and Flame Flame just thought it was adorable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so so nice to see all those reactions to that. <laughs> it's, it wasn't really something I would expect from Frieden to to do. No, you know, no, just, me neither. <laughs> yeah. The appeal is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really like that. <laughs> and I liked how the message of living in the present kind of came back from uh, the previous book, at least a little bit, in this one as well, when Freerun told um, Sign that 
now is all there is. And like, because we talked about that, I think a little bit that there were, I think at least two instances in the previous book that sort of uh, deal with that. And so I thought it was nice that it came back here. And I, I imagine it could be something that continues a little bit here and there, uh, even moving forward from here. Because mm. I feel like, well, living in the present is something that Freerin maybe deals with a little bit, uh, like internally. Like, sure, she is learning from her past. I think as the story goes, which is an interesting thing, mm. but even more so, I think she is learning from the present, like kind of, well, or rather maybe she isn't learning from the past. She is learning from the present, but she is learning to appreciate her past by learning from the present. Uh, I guess, yeah, I yeah. guess that's what the story is kind of about. Um, and so, yeah, now it's all there is, is, uh, is true. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But another message that I felt from at least some of the chapters in this volume was kind of the importance of, emotional support i mean one of the chapters was even called emotional support uh, in this volume but <laughs> yeah it, 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 it came up even before that chapter when i think yeah it was the second chapter of this uh volume uh in a flashback heiter told freeran that children need adults to provide emotional support of course freeran views everyone as, a ch as, as as children like just compared to her age mm -hmm. uh but then came that second to last chapter of this volume the one that's actually called emotional support where both Stark, as Stark and also Himmel through a flashback, uh, both made the point that everyone benefits from emo emotional support. It's not just children. Um, and I love how Friedman really took that to heart as she comforted Fern in her fever. Yeah, I love that. Mm. Yeah, children are not the only ones that need emotional support. It's very true. And sometimes it's tough for adults to acknowledge that because yeah. they, don't want to, they don't want to feel as though they're being belittled or mm -hmm. as if they're immature or something like that but you know we all we all need some emotional support in however way we need it really and mm -hmm. maybe ho however way our loved ones give it as long as it's not abusive <laughs> right no absolutely absolutely and yeah that, i think it's a really important message that i yeah i appreciate it a lot speaking of himmel himmel gave her a ring that she's kept all these years yeah um one of the mirrored lotus but she just chose it randomly and didn't really <laughs> it wasn't so much that himmo gave it to her it was just so much that hey go pick something out he's like i really don't care fine i'll take this one mm -hmm. um himmel no knew what the ring meant oh yes he uh, knew. She, she did not <laughs> yes uh, at <laughs> least she, at the time she, yeah and she even said that she doubted that himmel knew what the ring meant but he knew <laughs> like he, uh, he definitely knew <laughs> thank you flashbacks like you know <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, he even, okay, look, he even put it on the freaking ring finger, you know, the, yes. the wedding ring finger. So. He did, as he went down on one knee in front of her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Something I forgot to mention is that this ring is of a lotus, uh, a mirrored lotus, which in this world is, it means eternal love. I mean, I don't, is, mm -hmm. there, is there a mirrored lotus in this world? Like, I'm I not a huge don't... flower person. Yeah, yeah. I didn't bother <laughs> yeah, looking it up. Yeah, me neither. I have no idea. I just assumed it was just for this world, but who knows? Maybe right, it, me too. Maybe it is like a real thing too. But yeah, anyway. Um, yeah. She is totally oblivious to Himmel's feelings for her, which is a little sad. But I imagine maybe it's something that she will understand at some point as she continues mm -hmm. to learn from her present. Although that that's gonna be sad in and of itself for her to realize that he loved her, because obviously he's gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, but that I think that will make the the supposed reunion. I mean, that's what the whole journey is about. True. This reunion, all the more sweet, I guess. That's um, true. Hmm. In some way. Right. There was a part in this volume where she mentioned another elf that had bested her in combat once. And Oh yeah. I I just kind of want to want to meet this character now. <laughs> at at, yeah. at some point, obviously. I don't know when or how, but it would be cool to to meet that elf at some point. Cuz obviously I just want to see more elves. Like we've only really seen Freer and and uh Kraft. Yeah, I agree. Would be nice, especially one that has beaten Freer in a in, in a fight once. <laughs> right. Well, and I wonder, you know, how long ago was this fight? Exactly. Um, was it before she was with Himmel's group, or was it during, you know, the in between time <laughs> of right. her wandering? Not mm. entirely sure.
But maybe that's something that we have to wait for a, a flashback of some sort. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's hard to say, like, because elves do live a, such a long time. <laughs> like, supposedly the elf would still be around unless something bad happens. So. Exactly. Yeah, right. Precisely. So it's like, I'm not expecting to necessarily meet any of the, I think it was six humans who had beaten her. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not expecting to, to meet either of them because, yeah, they might all be long gone. Mm. But the elf, <laughs> like, there's a, there's a high probability, I think, that the elf is still around. Fair. Going way back, but when she woke up and destroyed the flower, I just thought, what a boss. Like, yes, you know, yeah, immediately. We, we, <laughs> we yeah. knew her strength, but I, I'm not going to lie. I think Sign's worry about the whole thing kind of got me on the edge of my seat as well. Mm, it's like, mm. oh, how is this, this going to go down? Like, oh, but she's just <laughs> like, didn't even let him finish. She's like, okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah, true, true. His, his kind of thought monologue there definitely d- did have that kind of effect. So, yeah. Yeah, oh, that, that was a great chapter. When they're at that that noble guy's place um, and they're at the, the ball. Yes. And his sign just asks, uh, shall we dance too? He's like, I'm eating cake. Yeah. Like, oh, fair enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I love that. I love it. It, it was so great. <laughs> oh, boy. Understandable? Have a great day. Like, you yes, know, it was, right. It was, <laughs> it was, so, it was good. so good. Like, no, I'm yeah. eating this cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's also funny, though, because, like, this whole time she's been trying to make him feel better and prove to him that she's an older woman. <laughs> True. And the one time, the one time he, like, kind of treats her as not a child in a way. <laughs> she's like, no, nah, I'm eating cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, she kind of ruined that chance there. But <laughs> it was worth I mean, it. It was worth yeah, it. Yeah, it was gag. worth it. I, mean, I, take, I take the cake too. You know, oh, I, yes. I totally understand. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Yes. I, I do like Sign, though. I think he's a very charming fellow. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We will talk about him soon. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, my last thing on Freedom was just, well, I felt really sorry for her when. You know, at, they're at the yeah. at the exam, and she, mm-hmm. the two people that she's grouped up with are like already fighting each other, <laughs> they're like wrestling. Like, oh my yeah. gosh, <laughs> this is this isn't just uh-huh. verbal. This is physical. It is physical fighting here. Yes. Oh. oh boy. And you know, I'm I'm rooting for that girl who's having her 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 twin tails pulled, because that's not okay to pull in on on a person's twin tails. That's I, I, she was asking for it. Unacceptable. That's all I was <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, but I mean, I guess it, I guess it'll be interesting to see who those characters are. Right. Uh, but, yeah. I, I almost wonder if they're just gonna be just these joke characters the entire time. Mm-hmm. If you think just carries the team, and the, the most of the story is just gonna be on Fern's group, you know? Uh, you know, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> But at the same time, I would not mind like there being some sort of story in that group as well. For sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> During their their training um, at oh gosh, how do you pronounce the city that they're in? The the magic city. Correct. Well, if if I'm gonna do my best German accent uh, and to pronounce this as as well as I can in German, uh-huh. I would pronounce it Oysterst. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oyster. So o- oysters. Oysterst. Like. I'm going to yeah. say oysters. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it sounds um, like oyster. Ah. <laughs> oysters. O- o- oysters. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so this this uh large city, yeah. uh, this magic this magic city, oysters. Uh-huh. Um when they're there and and studying for the exam, there's just this panel where they're I, I don't know what they like they're eating she's eating this giant cake and I think is it her birthday or something? I don't know, but it's a huge cake. Oh so yeah, did, you're right. <laughs> did did we miss her birthday? Like I, I don't know. Why else would you have that giant? I guess maybe she was treating herself, unless if it wasn't the birthday. Yeah, I mean I wouldn't put it past her. <laughs> True, and I think that's all I have on her. Well then, let's move on to sign next, aka goatee priest. Yeah, <laughs> goatee. <Good job. laughs> he really likes older women. Yes. Mm. He does. <laughs> He is a man of culture. Evidently. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, we learned that his friend who left to go on an adventure only intended to be gone for three years, but at this point he's been gone for ten. So, 
science objective from this volume on becomes to to find his friend gorilla warrior <laughs> <laughs> great name by the way what a name <laughs> yeah uh, i am curious about his actual name though but maybe maybe we shouldn't be like maybe that just does not matter <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like goatee priest and gorilla warrior. This just rolls off the tongue. It does. <laughs> I mean, it'll be everyone's favorite comic book hero. <laughs> yeah. Goatee priest and gorilla warrior. Um, I like it. Yes, I. I'm glad that he's decided to go on his own to find his friend. It's inter- It's interesting that it, it's been ten years. So sometimes you would think uh, maybe he's dead. I'm kind of hoping that he finds his friend, but maybe the friend, instead of continuing on, maybe he's decided to settle down for some reason. I don't know. Hmm. I, I mean, I'm fine with I'm fine with whatever. Like that, I was just thinking of possibilities why he would be gone for so long. Hmm. You know, especially if he said he was going to be back in three years. Exactly know? right. Like if he, well, I, I guess if he's doing well, I guess why wouldn't he have even like sent a letter or anything like that? Right, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm curious about that. I guess he could just be captured in some kind, which is not great, but he's just not dead. For sure. Yeah, yeah, you're right. For, absolutely. There could be something else that's keeping him up. Sion at least had... He, he, well, he said that he had a good time traveling with the party before he left. Yeah. So that, that, was, that was very... I, I, I thought that was very sweet. It was. It was nice having the four party members there, and... While I said I, I'm glad that he went on by himself, I am kind of like torn because I, I liked having the four party members there as well. And the, the dynamic he brought, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was it was like having Heiter there, you know, Heiter, <laughs> how do you pronounce his name? Yeah, yeah, Heiter. Heiter. Heiter, Heiter, Heiter. Heiter. yeah, yeah. No, I think, I mean, yeah, I, I thought it was great. Like, I loved, I loved getting to know him through this volume and I thought he fitted into the party very well. So, like, I understand him leaving, definitely. And I, I, I admire him for following his goal there but i i do i will miss him and i do hope and i I do think that he will reunite with the party eventually yeah or maybe or maybe vice versa maybe the party reunites with him meaning that they end up they end up catching up with him you know what i mean oh yeah right right yeah because they are heading more north because he he's heading more north right now than they are right so they they should be going around to that general direction as long as things go smoothly in this exam, you know, I use the term loosely, but uh-huh. uh, as long as they can get that taken, yeah, they should be heading up north and, and maybe they would end up going in that in that direction. Yeah, because Freerini even said that they'll need a priest in addition to a skilled mage when they enter the right. northern plateau. So, so yeah, they, 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 they got to they gotta team up with him again. They got to. <laughs> but what I like about him, besides the thing I've said, is that he brings kind of a, a level-headed adult. I mean, yes, he's the, he's a corrupt priest, but he is he is a more mature and and thoughtful person. Mm. Well, maybe he, he he just has more experience than the other two younger ones, and then Frieden, who's still trying to understand humans, I guess. Right. Exactly. I mean, he's a he's a people person. I think. Yeah, I I agree, and it just kind of helps these young adults mature. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I really liked his role in this book, uh, like, like for that kind of stuff. Like, I love how in the the first chapter after he joins the party, he referred to Ferns and Stark's fighting as lovers' quarrel, <laughs> and then later on in the same chapter when he left the party earlier that he 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 was like, why don't they just get together already? <laughs> so he's shipping them so hard. Oh and yeah, I love that. It's so oh, fun. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, plus, plus the fact that he. Well, I, I said I think he's a people person. Like I, he, he understands people, humans in general, very well. Yeah. That kind of makes me hopeful for that ship, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. It's. I think it's a great sign. Uh huh. <laughs> um, I definitely have a lot to say on that, but. Yes. <laughs> uh, I guess one of the things I'll say about sign is that he, he, he didn't want to leave. Because of his brother, and his his brother took offense to that. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that whole that, that whole conflict was kind of quick, you know. Uh, oh, I don't want to leave because my brother brother slaps him. All right, I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> True, was, was, that was pretty dumb of me. It was kind of quick, but I mean, he he understood, like, cause he up until that point he didn't know, or well, well, yeah, he yeah he he thought his brother 
wanted him to stay probably. Uh, but after yeah, that, he understood true. that that wasn't the case. So, yeah, fair enough. And mm-hmm. and maybe and, and who knows? Maybe that was a bit of his, an excuse that he was trying to give himself in order not to go. Um, true, maybe. Versus actually, but but either way, he he did end up going, and and you know he's not going to live with any regrets. So yeah, good for him. That is good. Yeah. Yeah. Or try not to, at least. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. My last thing on him isn't really on him, <laughs> but the, oh. the place where they encountered that uh, chaos flower yeah. was called Laub Hills. Laub, I think, means leaves. So, yeah, flower leaves, I guess. Some, something like that. And, you know, there were a lot of... Obviously, like, pretty much every name of characters and locations in this series is German words, but... I, I, I'm probably not going to mention all of them. I think last time I probably mentioned every single thing, but I'm not going to continue to do that all the time. But I guess when it's <laughs> these, like, I, I guess, yeah, from time to time I will. So, yeah. But is that it on sign? Yeah, that's it. I was just going to ask, what about oysters? Oysters. There we go. Oysters. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, like. one, that meant extremely. I think I pointed that out at some point. Oh. Because they... Oh, I, meant, I forgot um, about that. I think I mentioned... Oh, well, I could be wrong, but Oysost means extremely, and Schwier, like the, the Schwier Mountains, means difficult. And I think I said that <laughs> getting to that city yeah. would be extremely difficult, like how that <laughs> was kind of a, a play on that. I think is probably mm. the intention there. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, then, let's talk about Fern next. She turns 18. Yeah. In this book. We are, throughout this entire book, we are at the well, 29 years after the death of Himmel. So not not a lot of time passed. But yeah, she did turn 18 just like uh, just like Stark did in the previous book. But yeah, like, I have a lot of shipping-related commentary <laughs> on her right here. Oh, yeah, um, I mean, I do too. <laughs> good. <laughs> this volume was huge shipping fuel. Huge! Yes, it really, really was. Because before this, like... Sure, we we probably speculated about it, but there wasn't like right. anything concrete to really grab on. But this, yeah, this one definitely gave us plenty. And well, well, I, well, getting getting started with that, um, I love how she wanted to keep that uh, mirror lotus bracelet that she got from Stark. Like even <laughs> after learning what that that it means eternal love, uh, <laughs> she still you know she likes it because Stark put his whole heart into picking it for her. So, like yeah, she she doesn't mind the fact that it has that kind of a meaning. In fact, maybe she even likes that fact, you know? I think that's part of it, but I think the other part is, like, she doesn't, yeah, she doesn't mind, or, like, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where you don't want to admit that's the truth, but you just, you know, you just kind of sly about it, Mm -hmm. or you're coy about it, I guess. So I I think, I think it definitely, you know, the the meaning does hold something special to her, you know? Yes. Um. Even even if she, you know, if you were to ask her that, she'd be like, "No, no, what? No, what? <laughs> you disappoint me, or whatever." However, she would say <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, however she would respond. But yes, absolutely. There were also two times in this volume where Stark, well, well when when she, her and Stark's hands touched, uh, there was first the part where Stark touched her cold hands because he wanted to feel <laughs> how cold they were. And she kind mm-hmm. of, I, I think she kind of panicked. And well, obviously she touched his like neck to to just kind of tease him. But there was also when they were training, or when especially when Stark was training to become like a nobleman to be able to act that way, he he took her hand and kind of bowed before her. Uh, and in that instance, after he left, she kind of looked at her hand and in in a way, you know, that kind of way, you know, yeah, yeah, that yeah, one might yeah. do <laughs> if one has feelings, for her, perhaps. <laughs> So yeah, it was fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know, man. Like it was, you got a lot of interesting reactions from Fern. Yeah. Like Stark, we'll talk about, but but Fern, I definitely think she doesn't know exactly how she feels. Like these feelings that are inside of her right now hmm. are kind of new for her. I think so. Right. Um, in a way, she doesn't know how to react to them um that's why i like the moment where she touches his face with her with her cold hands <laughs> yeah. uh, i think yeah, that's a natural reaction and and just the the fact that they had these two fights i think mm. 
they're they're not terrible fights. No. They're really like like science says they they're lover quarrels, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Obviously, they're not lovers yet, but it's it's getting there. Uh-huh. Um, it's a sign. These fights are a sign that they're getting closer. You know that they really care about what the other person thinks or is doing, or, or whatnot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, for yeah, definitely Fern is interesting in that aspect. Definitely. Also, Fern and Stark seem to spend a lot of time together during that month they spent when they were taking shelter from the blizzard. Uh, because when we saw all of the like montage stuff, Freeren was pretty much constantly at the magic shop, and Sign was always at the bar leaving Fern and Stark by themselves pretty much that entire time. They were, like, mm-hmm. in the room or in the, in the cabin just hanging out. I, I don't know, like, maybe they didn't necessarily socialize a whole lot, necessarily, but just the fact that they were close, they, they, they actually chose to be close to one another, uh, I thought that was really sweet, and, you know, maybe maybe it means something. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, speaking of that, of that scene, that well, that fight really... I mean, what what Stark did, like, I, I think it was, you know, obviously just teasing, mm. um, just placing it, his hands on her cheek. But obviously, that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't the the issue for her. It was that he had he had the strong hand on her. Now, <laughs> there's a couple ways you take that. One, yeah, maybe she was really afraid of of, of something. Uh, I kind of take it as almost a oh gosh, how do I put this correctly? Like maybe she was feeling that she had this feeling that Stark was coming on to her, you know. Ah, but, okay. But not like, not like in a bad way. But you know, it was just those strong hands. And I think maybe she, oh, this is really maybe she got a little excited. Like not not excited as in like, oh my gosh, yes. But just more like, this is a new sensation. You know, having a strong hand on me. Uh huh. Right. Um, I mean, sure. And, and maybe mm. so. Maybe she got like butterflies, kind of a thing, and that's why she got upset. Maybe, right. I mean, potentially. Maybe, I don't know. Right, right. Or maybe she just did get scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I We we can't know for sure. But yeah, no. Def- I think it's definitely a possibility. But when asked if she hates him, she's like, why would you even ask that? Yes. Yeah, I like that. For, I, I really I really like Fur and just how her her personality, It it's mm-hmm. definitely different than like the moe, you know, cutesy girl that you see a lot in manga or, or anime you know <laughs> right <laughs> and it's, it's almost maybe a little more realistic i mean there's so many different types of personalities but i, I do feel like you would find a person maybe not as this however you, whatever dead a she is but yeah i mean i would i would classify her as some as some kind of tsundere like if we're going like stereotype i wonder if it's a kundere let me ah oh yeah yeah i i don't i really don't know all of those um different words there but she she definitely you know she it's it, at this point it's it seems pretty clear that she that she has like well she she likes uh, stark yet she often treats him in some way hostile like mm-hmm. um and i feel like that's like th- those are tsundere traits obviously she's not she's not like ah. violent <laughs> but maybe maybe, the, maybe how about this asado dere oh, okay what's that they're sadistic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the char- the characters enjoy the pleasure of humi- humiliating their love interest. Ah. I mean, she did. She did say that his penis was so small. <laughs> that one time. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we have it there. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. But, but it, it, maybe it's like a, so nuanced that it's hard to classify. But For either sure. way. Yeah, uh, yeah. But at least it's like it's along those lines somewhere. Like. Obviously, she is a unique character, I still think, uh, but she has some traits of those types of stereotypes, I guess. Yep. Gosh, I'm so excited to see their relationship. Ah. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so I, I love the dance between those two. It, mm. You don't really see it in the manga. You see like a brief moment and, you know, how she says, oh, it really, still really doesn't uh, suit you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is maybe another Sado Dede moment. But anyway, um, she... They they dance. There is a kind of a a page spread of that at the very beginning of the chapter, and then it's colored. And I'm so glad it's colored on on the back. Yes. Of yeah, the, the back of the volume. Oh. Yeah, I love that image so much. It's so nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so pretty. And that's when it's like, when's that anime coming, huh? Right. Oh my god. Give it. Come on. Yeah. Come on. 
Oh. Give it to me. Yeah, man. Oh, it's going to be great. Whenever, however it happens, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think that's all I have on, like, shipping stuff on the Fern side. But I have other things to talk about Fern. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let's continue with a few more things. Well, I have another thing that's uh, about her being the youngest ever mage to achieve the highest possible score on yeah. that on the third class exam. That was mm -hmm. really, I mean, I, I we knew that she was very talented. Like, we've seen her, especially, like, in uh, that previous volume when she fought the demons. Uh, like, we understood that she is very powerful and capable. But, yeah, it was it was just good. It, it was, yeah, good to see that. And that she is, like, even through that kind of made a name for herself. Like, those uh, people that were observing. They recognized her. Uh, yeah, right. They recognized her and kind of knew who she was. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, good luck to her and her group. I mean, she's got some crazy mage lady in there. I mean, we'll yeah, evil. Her, but... Yeah, oh my gosh. That's scary. But yeah, yeah, we will talk yeah. about her later. <laughs> hoping, it, hoping it will all turn out okay. Um, mm -hmm. hey, who knows? Maybe she'll impress this crazy woman um, right. with her with her power. But <laughs> there, that moment where she, well, the, the chapter she got sick and, and, um, Friedman was holding her hand. She she got embarrassed, and I think she, and I think she got embarrassed, and well, and I think Stark even kind of implied it, mm. because Stark was there and, and asked like why, Fina was holding her hand, um, yeah. Which I guess maybe that is another shipping moment where, you know, if someone that you kind of like is there and you're seeing sees you being, maybe treated like a child, you probably wouldn't like that maybe. So maybe that's why she was embarrassed in that way. Yeah. But I'm glad at the end of it they. She let she didn't do it, and they kind of like shared shared a moment. Yeah, yeah, that was very good. I love that moment. They have they have a great relationship. They do. Like Firin, or I mean, in some way, Firin is a mother to to Fern. Like since since she has been with her since she was nine years old, and you know, mm -hmm. although <laughs> there's also the side of it where well, well, Fern kind of acts as, acts like a mother to Freeran as well. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it is a, it's a beautiful relationship they got. Yeah. Uh, the party is made up of only awkward people. That yes, I like that comment a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true. true. Yeah, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> and I think that's all I got. All right then, moving on to Stark. Then I'll just kick this off by admitting that. Before this volume, I had actually never noticed that scar in his forehead. What? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> Didn't we talk about the scar? I mean, it's never... Well, it's always covered by hair. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just never... I, I Was it actually ever brought up in conversation before? I think so. If it, if it was, I guess I must have forgotten. Because, I mean, I guess if it actually was, then yeah, I sure. I'm, I'm, I must have noticed it, I guess. But I had, if that is the case, then I had, I had forgotten because I, I, I remember when I got this volume the first time, I, I looked at the back and I saw the image of, of him and Fern dancing and I was like, oh, I guess he has a scar in his head because you, you can see very clearly there, especially since it's colorized. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was just a funny moment, like a derp moment for me. Because I, I believe he got the scar from, um, wow, why am I running a blank? Uh, his his master the the dwarf why oh that's a, right a, oh yeah Ison yeah Ison yeah so ah uh, yeah well there yeah there was a moment yeah when he, when yeah when Ison did hit him or something like that yeah I I guess maybe I just didn't connect that he get a scar from that maybe I just yeah I don't know but yeah ah uh, well 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 then everything makes sense now <laughs> mm. cool well just continuing on with the 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 shipping thing now we get the Stark side of it. He didn't give Fern a birthday present because he'd rather she choose her own gift. He, I guess he also didn't, wasn't sure what to get. I mean, it mm. was kind of wise because he had he spent three hours <laughs> trying to figure out what the right gift was. Amazing patience on both of their sides, by the way. Although but, maybe uh, they maybe 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 patience wasn't required since they enjoyed each other's company. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, it turned out to be a pretty good move and is in without him really knowing. Because, you know, so when they found out the meaning of the flower, mm. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> um, and then just Fern wanted to keep it anyway. I was just like, dude, Stark, let's go. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, but he he doesn't seem to like really. I mean, I think he thought it was like a nice gesture. You know, like he felt good that she wanted to still keep it, but I don't think he thought anything more of it. I think Stark is, mm-hmm. you know, not at the. I mean, not to say Fern is like you know acknowledging her feelings, but I think Stark is going to take maybe a little while yet to acknowledge his own feelings as well. And yeah, I, I, right. No, but I, I feel like Fern is a little bit further ahead, I feel, maybe, in yeah, yeah, in yeah, developing yeah. the feelings. I, Because I, I, I also felt like, based on her reactions to a lot of things, it just seemed like there was more uh, of that in her, so far at least. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Although, I mean, who knows? Maybe Stark is just really good at hiding it. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, I think I've already said everything about their their ship that I that I have. Hmm? Um, I mean, it was it's great. But I guess talking about his time with the nobleman, yeah, he remembers the trauma from his father. But thankfully, the nobleman was not like his father and was kind to the the younger brother in the end, and and. Well, I guess just throughout, but um, it, it was nice to kind of get that, maybe in a way, closure for him um, right. to realize that, you know, not everyone is like his father, you know, not yeah. as cruel. Exactly. Yeah. And it was interesting how he really saw his, well, or at least for a moment, he saw his father in uh, Lord Orden. And then obviously he also saw himself in his son, uh, Moot. Moot, I think it's called. It's, it's spelled like. I guess oh. in English, I guess you would say mutt, <laughs> but I think it's in German, it's mut, uh, which means courage. Mut. Oh, nice name. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and it's very similar in Swedish, actually. It's spelled M-O-D and it's pronounced mood. So it's similar mood. to the German. Uh, but mood. yeah, it means courage. Mood. So that that's cool. Um, but yeah, he kind of saw himself in him as well, uh, which... Uh, and, yeah. And, and like, yeah, j- j- just it, it was nice to see... I guess a, a happier resolution to to that family's story. Or, yeah. Oh, I, it's sad the older brother died, but just I guess mm-hmm. as as far as the relationship between Mood and and uh, his father went, it was a happy resolution than it was for Stark. Absolutely. And hey, you know, Stark got the uh, some training in <laughs> nobility, I guess, and yes, and he got to dance with the cute girl. So I think, hey, it works out. <laughs> Definitely. And another thing he got to be trained in, supposedly, although we didn't get to see it, although it was mentioned, was this uh, sword technique uh, of the Orden family, which, I mean, I assume he was taught that. Like, I mean, I assume he he knows that at this point. We just didn't get to see it. So, sure, he doesn't carry a sword, but I wonder if we'll ever get to see him use that technique at some point. Because we also, I guess speaking of that, he also trained with old man Vol, or Vol, yeah. Uh, a little after that, and in what at least one of the panels there, it seemed like he was training with some swords or at least like fake swords or whatever. So right, I wonder if he's gonna kind of learn to do like sword wielding as well eventually, like maybe switch between swords and axes. That'd be pretty sick. Yeah, could be. <laughs> but yeah, he he got a lot of training done, like both like etiquette training and also combat training from two sides uh, in this volume. So that's cool. And he did improve, according to Old Man Vol, at least. So was there anything else on Stark? No. Okay, then, well, let's talk about Old Man Vol, then. Okay. What a sweet old man. Like, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> I love I love characters like that. They're just like, I guess, at first glance, they seem kind of grumpy and kind of, kind of mean a little bit, maybe. But then you get to know them, and they're just super sweet. And like, oh my gosh. Like, the end of that chapter that he was in... Uh, when he was talking to Freerin that last night they spent mm-hmm. together that week, it that it did get me a bit teary eyed, like him admitting that he had forgotten his wife's face and voice, um, mm. as well as knowing that well he is so old he is older than the average dwarf, uh, and like yeah. he can die at any moment probably, like all of that kind of combined just I, I thought it was so sad. Agreed, and but then you know he says. Before they leave, like, hey, I dreamt about my wife last night. I was mm. like, oh, yeah, great. <laughs> that was, yeah, yeah, right. And like, hopefully, or assume, presumably, that kind of, I guess, re- refreshed his mind on what she looks and sounds like. So yeah, that was that was a sweet ending to that chapter. But it was still, I thought, it was still a pretty heavy chapter, though overall. Yeah, I mean, you know, living that long, having a 
a human as as, as a wife and then her passing away and you just mm. keep living on yeah it's uh it's interesting it's almost as if, if you know an elf had taken a human as as a spouse right in a way mm -hmm. yeah because like he he was he's like about 400 years old i think they said and yeah. so like he might he may have lived you know widowed for 300 years or so like i mean obviously we can't say for sure but right. but like it's possible that it may have been that long and that's just insane like poor guy yeah i think for a mention that or said it was sad that he must have been very lonely mm. um so it's nice that frida was able to visit and talk to him and yeah and to see frida and really just i don't know it seems like she's talking just really opened up to him uh or i don't know it 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 seems like she was really enjoying her time, maybe even more so than she had in, in other moments. You mm. know, like, I don't know. It, maybe she was just happy to have someone that it has also lived a, a fairly long life. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that was really nice. I mean, he was only he was only in the chapter and he may never return again, perhaps. But, yeah, yeah. He, he made an impact, though, I think. And his name means full or like whole kind of oh, okay and i i wasn't able to connect that to like any meaning necessarily but yeah he's lived a full whole life yeah oh uh, yeah let's say that i think that works <laughs> <laughs> oh okay yeah no sure. it works <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, I'm kidding <laughs> anything else on him yeah no, that's it okay then well craft yeah he came back a little bit twice in a way right yeah exactly yeah i mean yeah for, for yeah First of all, it was it was nice to see that statue and learn that he had actually been a hero, a, like a long, long time long, ago, like yeah. so long ago that he isn't even really remembered anymore. Um, That's so sad. That, yeah, I mean, yeah, but right, yeah, it's interesting though. Like, how long ago could it have been? <laughs> right, we understood that he had done you know deeds and things that people had long forgotten, but mm. you know enough to get like a statue, right? But also long enough to nobody abs remembers whatsoever mm -hmm. i mean himmel has been dead for a long for a, not a long time but for a fair amount of time uh, but people are still passing down his story of mm. defeating the demon king um so it's like how long until that story eventually gets old you know it, it's it's just interesting to think to have this example of a, of a of a hero that story just eventually got too old for anybody to remember right yeah exactly it's also like another thought that crossed my mind about that is i guess i mean sure sure it, it, it's definitely about an insane amount of time having passed like that's definitely probably the main reason why he has been forgotten but another thought that crossed my mind was i guess the the personality of craft i think is very different from himmel himmel Fair. you know made an effort to be remembered like a lot whereas what we've seen of craft obviously we don't know him too well but I think at least the impression I've gotten of his character is that he's very humble and he he doesn't really True. like boast about his achievements and stuff like that. Because you know when he when we met him in the previous volume, like he didn't seem like someone who had saved the world or you know been a big hero or anything like that. Uh, he was just a traveling monk kind of, but now we know this, so it just kind of gives a new perspective to his character. And we saw him for real, obviously briefly when he encountered evil in the final chapter of this book and that just the impression i got there is just like he's such a nice guy like he he goes out of his way to to save perfect strangers and to and to put the effort into kind of put the pieces together that this evil person may not be such a good person <laughs> yeah yeah and then as as they party, he's like, oh, I'm excited to hear a story, the story from Frieden after it's all done. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think that, because if I remember correctly, in the previous volume, he, he kind of was sad that no one remembered what he had done um, for the world. And that he was hoping that Goddess would be able to praise him or whatever term he used. Yeah, that's right. So I, I, so I guess he sees Frieden since he, he's kind of surprised to see another elf, he sees Frieden as someone else that he could share his accomplishments and stories with, and True. vice versa, he can be that, that ear for Frieden mm. um, to hear her accomplishments. I mean, kind of similar to 
to heighter in a way when what what we saw at the beginning of this book in the flashbacks where he was also like well he didn't need an adult to like to support him emotionally or you know he he because he had the the goddess hmm. like i guess a, a little bit similar yeah yeah but I guess my last thing on craft was that it seemed, based on the statue, they said it was a monk and a warrior, and it looked like craft was the warrior out of those two back then. Uh, at least to me, it looked that looked that way, and that he, I guess, as many centuries, maybe maybe even millennia have passed since then, he has switched over to being a monk potentially. At least that's how I saw it. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta take a look at that again real quick. Because based on their designs, he looked like the one that was the warrior, in, uh, to me, in, anyway. And the other one, yeah. not as much. It, his, it Was his title in the previous point, was it a warrior monk? I don't remember if it... like What I recall is just monk, but maybe it was a warrior monk. Uh, I just remember monk, though. But yeah, could have been both. By the way, American English is an interesting thing. Oh, well, you know, it's it's M O N K, and yet as an American, I say monk instead of like you know monk. Oh yeah, yes, that, that yeah, honestly, yeah, that is a word that I've actually thought of before. It's like yeah, that is a bit of a confusing word <laughs> for me to pronounce. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I I I'm guessing the British pronunciation is maybe maybe they go like monk. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, true. I, I guess it does make a little more sense in British. <laughs> But yes. Okay, here we go. A monk and a warrior. Yeah. Mhm. And I think it's pretty clear that he's the warrior out of those two, right? Yeah, I mean the the guy looks more like a, you know, like a, like a like a priest, so a monk would have to be that. Right. Oh, yeah. Maybe Kraft changed his uh class. Yeah, exactly. Cuz his clothes are completely different as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I think you're definitely right. Mhm. Plus didn't he talk a little bit in the previous volume, some, uh, something along the lines of as elves, like when he talked to Freed, and like as elves, they basically live multiple lifetimes because of their incredibly long life. And so mm. it makes sense to, to well, to, 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 to switch class like that as a human might not have as good chances to do that, but an elf could easily do that. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. I, just, I still wonder if it was a warrior monk. I can't remember. It may have been. I, I, yeah, it definitely may have been. But either way, but if it, it was a warrior monk, maybe he took on the, the monk class as well, or maybe it is complete, complete monk. But maybe he did it, because he admired the the goatee, priest. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. The original yeah. goatee priest. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and and to honor him. Yeah. Maybe he took on that class. Although that would have been years, years ago. So, who knows. For sure. At the very least, he may have maybe like learned something from that uh, companion of his, and that may have wanted him to, you know, to switch classes into monk. Um, yeah, uh, Kraft was just a monk. Like, uh, I mean, I mean, meaning when they saw him in the previous volume, he said he was a monk. So okay, okay, gotcha. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. No, all good, all good. But is that all? All, all on Kraft. Yep. Then let's talk about Ebel. So. I think her name means evil or like, <laughs> or at least like bad, like, like uh, speaking of like people like evil or bad kind of, um, at the very least, like etymologically, evil and evil, I'm sure share a similar origin, um, mm. cause they're very similar words. Um, so yeah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, not a great style. I'm going to name my child evil. <laughs> Or she changed her name, you know. <laughs> it's like, well, I really got only one choice here. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but you got got a bad feeling about her. Um, she has a very mischievous look. Me, mm-hmm. but she's she's kind of cute. I'll give her that. Absolutely, uh, I love her design. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, it's not afraid to kill people, or like she's willing. That doesn't have remorse over it, you know. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, at least according to what we hear from Kraft as to, like his observations, she supposedly killed some bandits in self defense. Which like uh, sure I can get behind that, I suppose. Yeah, I but suppose. Then, but then we learned that she had killed a first class mage on the like on a previous exam. 
yeah. like like someone who was like an instructor or like a, an examinee or whatever like or examiner or whatever yeah um and that's that's worrisome right you're just going way too far seems like it though although i mean i can imagine she could be a really fun character though like just you know to to observe as a reader um i, I mean like we're saying it's gonna be interesting to see her and fern react and you know what exactly are their power levels at in comparison so right exactly yeah because fern supposedly did better than evil at the third class exam she was the youngest to get a perfect true i, I guess we don't, we don't know we don't know if she's the same they look age, to be yeah. about the same age though um but true but yeah you're right who knows um looks can be deceiving they can but she killed a first class mage. She's capable of killing a first class mage. So that also says something about her power level. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of scary. <laughs> that's very scary, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder who this uh, third guy is in their group. <laughs> just like, <laughs> right. Just chilling around. Uh, just watching this, I don't know, just watching this evil girl. Uh -huh. do crazy things he's like, oh man what am i what are they well then he then maybe he also sees fern and her power level he's like i'm way in over my head <laughs> right yeah 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 i'm just super excited to to see the well the whole the whole exam in the next book yeah it should be fun um anyway do you have any other characters you want to talk about i do not then let's talk about whatever we got for predictions well, yeah, as I just said, like, yeah, just the exam itself. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it's going to take a while. Um, like, at least half of the next volume, I'm hoping. And, I mean, I could definitely imagine that, too. Like, and hell, maybe it'll even be, like, a majority of the next volume. That would, that, that would be fun. Oh, wow. Um, mm -hmm. Although maybe that's wishful thinking. I just, I just feel like an, another one of these kind of longer-running events would be neat at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I could see this exam thing being potentially being something like that. Yeah, if it's not the entire volume, I think that they'll start heading in the direction of sign because I think they're going to try to meet up with sign because they know they need a mm. priest. So they'll head up in the, in that direction, whether they get to the village or get to where he is or are just on the road. Either way, that they'll be in that uh, direction because I I don't necessarily think this arc is going to take up the whole volume although i, I wouldn't be as opposed right. to it uh -huh. per se um although it would be kind of sad if stark doesn't have much but you know <laughs> true that's it, true yeah he doesn't have the, much of a role to play here maybe that'll be the gag you know it's like <laughs> where have you guys or you know, I, maybe there'll be a panel of him just goofing off or something i don't know right i mean or or maybe he'll get a chapter like that just shows whatever he's doing in the meantime <laughs> yeah uh, yeah uh yeah so that's really what I'm thinking so far. And like I said earlier, I, I could see that Frieden's group is kind of just like, just gets carried the whole time by Frieden. Um, yes. It does, <laughs> it is not really the focus. But if it is, but if this is a longer arc, if like a few chapters, then it probably stands to reason that you would get something from her group as well. Right. But that would be neat. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what do you think are the chances that we might like the story might just shift focus away from the exams or away from the main group over to sign for like for one or two chapters. Like, what do you, th what do you oh, think about that? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I, I definitely would be okay with it. It would be nice to see his perspective, but I almost think that th this story doesn't really change perspectives ever. Not to say it's impossible, but uh -huh. usually freedom has to be involved in the chapter yeah in some way right yeah no I, I i do agree with that i i imagine we like the the thought caught across my mind that obviously that that might happen like i guess it's a possibility but i i do think it's more likely that we'll get his side of it all whenever they meet up with him again yeah yeah, um, yeah. that's what i'm thinking like it kind of just mm. be like wait for it to happen versus teasing it you know right right um uh, but yeah about the exam I feel like Fruin and Fern, obviously, they're both taking it. I don't think it's guaranteed that they'll both make it. Like, I think for sure one of them will make it. Because one of them has to make it. Uh -huh. But I think the most interesting outcome, I think, would be to like, for for Fruin to fail and Fern to pass. Yeah, I agree. I agree, actually. 
I, I had that whole thing where I thought that Frieden could carry the team, and I, she absolutely could, but maybe because these two knuckleheads are just <laughs> so incompetent and, yeah, yeah. you know, not willing to cooperate that, that she fails. Uh, that would be that would be hilarious. It would, and I don't think Fidian would really care. She's like, okay, whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, this is gonna expire like really soon anyway. Yeah, in fifty years anyway. <laughs> so why bother? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I do think that would be a fun outcome and and an interesting one for Fern to be like I guess technically the better mage. Right. Um, not that I ever think it would go to her head, but it would be a definitely a confidence booster because yeah. I think she she sometimes doubts her abilities. Yes. Way. Like she was very much against going it, 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 taking the exams. Thinking, like there's no way I can do it. There's no way. Uh-huh. Only a few people are selected. Yeah. So yeah, it would be would be really cool to see that. It would, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really excited for volume 5. But I don't have anything else for predictions at all. I don't either. Cool. Then do you have any closing thoughts? This was a great volume. I I was almost tempted to say my favorite, but I really like I really like the third volume too. So it's because because the third volume had the the whole uh, moment with um, Aura. Well, you know the scene the scene with the de- Aura, yeah, the, mm. the the demons and all that. I, I I felt like there was so much progression and, and just great moments in in that than everything else that happened in the volume. True. So I don't I, I still think that one was my favorite, but this is solid because you get a lot of the shippings, you know, these little teases <laughs> yes. and, and stuff like that. I think some great moments um for some of the characters and it, it was funny. Yeah, and getting to know Sign properly, uh I thought was also a treat. Right. Yep. Absolutely. And mm. then just the the tease at the end of these exams gets me excited for volume five. Yes, definitely, yeah. Oh I'm so stoked. I think it'll be like July or August or something like that whenever that book comes out. So it'll be a little while, but all right. I can't wait though. Oh my gosh, I'm so I'm so excited. Yeah, but, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is such a good series, and I'm so happy to be reading this. Absolutely. Like I think someone on our Discord server. By the way, we have a Discord server. I can't stress this enough. <laughs> if anyone wants to join, there's a link in our video description on YouTube. But I think it was Rafiki on our Discord server yep. at some point pointed out that, because, well, I think that's, this is his favorite manga, like, ever, but um, he pointed out that this series, as well as To Your Eternity, they're both shonen, technically, but they have a lot of kind of elements that make them feel a lot like seinen manga, which I agree with. I, I, I agree with that that point that he made. Mm. Like, yeah, because, like, in, in some sense, they... they both of those those series feel a little more mature than your average shonen stuff, uh, and I, I I enjoy that. Like this one, it's like a slice of life fantasy story, which <laughs> like that combination. I don't feel like it's that that common, but it right. it works so well for this manga. I mean, there's there's definitely some, especially as of late, those slice of life fantasies. I mean, at I least suppose. I, in in animation, I've I've seen. I've seen mm. a few few series like that, but this one's I, this one's just hits differently in in various aspects because while it's a a slice of life, they're they're also on a journey. A lot of the slice right. of lives mm. kind of take place in one place. Maybe they go somewhere and you know mm. they go to the beach or something like that. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. But this one is there's still a journey and and care, really great character progression. Not to say slice of life can have that, but I don't know. It, yeah, it's just it's unique. It's still original in that way, right? Um, and it's storytelling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you think this party will ever go to the beach? Have a beach chapter? Oh <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no. Like I was thinking, oh. I was thinking um, the other or just today when I was rereading this and just this whole ship shipping thing. I was like, would they ever like do anything? You know. <laughs> forgive me but like lewd or anything like that like ah like the most lewd thing we had was you know freedom blowing the kiss like that i mean that was that was maybe too much <laughs> maybe too much but yeah. but like would would there be anything between fern and and stark would they ever show that like i i don't know i don't know like it doesn't feel like that, that that's this kind of story uh yeah like like hmm. the, them seducing the other the, each other you know like maybe Fern walks in on Stark and he's, you know, 
I mean, maybe, maybe it's not something new, but he's completely ripping. She's like taking, but it doesn't, doesn't seem like something like that would happen. I don't know. I don't know. Just right. I was yeah. just thinking, I, I guess, I don't know why. I guess it's, I have a little bit of a hard time imagining it, but yeah, right, who knows? Right. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> it doesn't feel like that, that this kind of manga, but I, I could be wrong. I mean, I would, I think it would be a lot of fun if something a little more risky did happen. Obviously, it's not going to be <laughs> that risky, you know. Steamy. Well, I'm not, uh, okay, yeah, like, I'm not saying, like, oh, yeah, show me some nudity. Yeah, no. let's go. No, I'm absolutely. Not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going there, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Fern doesn't even need that. She can look through clothes with her magic anyway. <laughs> oh, gosh, you're right. <laughs> She's already seen it all. You're like, oh, yes. I'm impressed. <laughs> Oh, uh, that that part from I think it probably book two, right? Uh, oh my gosh, that, yeah. that's still like probably my favorite just comedy bit. Just how she just completely burned both Freedom and Stark one after the other. <laughs> I, you know, like we we talk about that that scar he has on his forehead. I mean, that's not the only scar he has. Oh that's no, not the yeah. only scar he has. <laughs> I think his his pride and emotions have been scarred and toyed with. Oh yes, ah oh, poor guy, but. I'm sure it'll work out at the end. It will. Yes, yes. We, we, we do believe. We do believe. But on all of that, I think we are done for this week. Yep. So if you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga. And it would be lovely if you'd like to support us by either rating our show on the podcast platforms or subscribing to our channel, Umami Manga, on YouTube. If you liked this episode, please share it with anyone you think might enjoy it too. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time when we'll talk about Volume 5. Bye-bye! See you later! Yeah, so maybe, 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 sorry.